Hi, my name is James. Welcome to King's Vine Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to build a little jig that will allow you to make perfect juice grooves in a cutting board assuming you have a router table. First, I want to say thank you to everyone for the fantastic year so far. And I want to tell you that our Father's Day sale for 2019 begins right now. We have wood from around the world to make our Thor's Hammer woodworking mallets. And starting now, they are all on sale for half price. We will run out of our precious Lignum Vitae, which is the world's densest wood, and Cocobolo, the most beautiful rosewood of all, because these are no longer being imported. But these two are half price for the sale until I run out. Details of the sale are in the description below. Thank you everyone, and have a happy Father's Day. I do have another video out that shows you how to make a larger, slightly more complex juice groove jig. And that one will actually allow you to make juice grooves in cutting boards of all sizes and thicknesses, uh, whether or not you have a router table. For that one, all you need is just a router. And that's a very handy jig to have. Uh, for a lot of people, they don't have a router table or the room for it necessarily in their shop. But I got a lot of requests from community members uh, on Facebook. We have a King's Fine Woodworking community who wanted something simpler and easier because they had a router table. And it turns out there is an easy way to do that. So I put this video together to show everybody, specifically you guys in the King's Fine Woodworking community. So a shout out to all of you there. I put this together for you guys to show you just how to do this and... This is a jig that's very easy. You can probably build it in five or 10 minutes and it only takes maybe two or three minutes to cut a full set of juice grooves in any cutting board with this. So here it is, hope you like it. So this is what it looks like. Uh, I just used a piece of plywood and the plywood wasn't quite thick enough so I had to add a little bit of hardboard to the front and back. It's set up so one side goes towards the fence, one side goes towards the core box bit. In my case, I'm using a three quarter inch and one side goes towards the cutting board. And it's identical on the other side. And it also has a very specific thickness, if you'll, if you'll look here, and I'll give you those dimensions as well. So I'm going to orient this core box bit so that the sharp edge is facing straight back into the fence. And I will line up the fence or pull the fence forward there until the uh, template fits perfectly between the fence and the very edge of that cutter head. Next we'll orient it in like this and I'll take a note of which side of the jig goes towards the fence. So that side goes towards the fence but I'll need to now rotate the core box bit so that it's the cutter head is facing to the side so that it can engage against the template. Okay so here's how we set this thing up to use it. We have this top side that says to the fence and on the left it says uh, to the cove bit and this happens to be a three quarter inch cove bit. So I'll line the top up flush with the fence and slide it over so that the inside part there is flush with the cove bit. Then I need to take a square. Make sure it's square against the back fence and slide it over till that touches. I have to hold the square in place and carefully slide a cutting board up to just touch the square along this edge. Now on the other side of the cutting board I have placed a stop block. I want to have that stop block perfectly flush with the edge of the cutting board and I want to clamp that in place. So that was pretty straightforward, but it's imperative that you take a second and check it one more time. So I line the jig up, I slide the screw over, get that flush, and then I slide the cutting board in and make sure it perfectly fits between the stop block and the square, and we can see that it does. If it lines up perfectly there and perfectly on the other side, we have it set up just right. If not, just move your stop block. With that done, we'll turn our attention to the other side. You see I just have to flip this over and I look at the side that goes to the fence and the side that goes to the core box bit. I'll line it up flush with the fence there and flush with the core box bit. Same exact procedure. I'll put my square up to the edge and hold it still. We'll move the template out of the way and then I'll slide the cutting board into place.
and I will slowly slide the cutting board back along the square until that gets in position. I've got to move my stop block out of the way a little bit there. So I'll slide that all the way back until it just about touches the core box bit and now I can see where the stop block needs to go. I'll bring that slowly into place so as not to disturb anything and I'll firmly clamp the stop block down. Now once again I want to take the time to just check it. You should always check these twice just to make sure you spent all that time making a beautiful cutting board. There's no sense in rushing through it so hold the template in place, put the square in place and then slowly slide the cutting board back and make sure the cutting board lines up perfectly with the edge of the square and with the edge of the stop block. If it does you're set. You're ready to make your cuts. If it doesn't you'll need to adjust it. Then it's time to cut the grooves. I do that by starting up the router bit and then slowly plunging the board down over the router bit while moving it either to the left or to the right and of course against that fence. If you plunge it as you're moving it you'll kind of get a more elongated cut rather than a plunge and you'll avoid burns that way. It's also important to have your bits clean. If your bits are clean and sharp then you can do these juice grooves without any burns. If uh, you're getting burns it's probably because your bit is dirty and I do have a video that shows how to clean and maintain these bits and I'll show you after I make this cut here how there are no burns in the groove then we'll just flip the board over and do the same thing on the other side once again we'll plunge down over the board uh, I'm sorry over the bit while I'm moving the board uh, from the right to the left and just slowly move it back and forth from one side to the other. You don't want to cut too fast and you don't want to cut too slow. Those can sometimes lead to burns as well. Uh, you do have a, a lot of flexibility in that intermediate speed range as long as you have a clean bit. I lift it carefully so as not to drag it through the bit and you can take a close look there even right at the corner there are no burns in this juice groove and that's because I had a clean uh, router bit and I moved it at a reasonable speed for this species of wood so those are the grooves on the long axis of the board if I had a number of cutting boards that were all the same length I would make sure to cut all of those first in this orientation before I move the stop blocks since I don't, I will need to set up the template again here and set up new stop blocks, this time for the short axis of the board. So I've got to turn the cutter head sideways on the bit, make that come up flush with the edge of my template guide there, and put the square in just like before. I've got to rotate the board 90 degrees, so now I am cutting along the short axis of the cutting board. I want to slide that in carefully, so I'm touching that square perfectly along the edge and then I'll put the stop block in place here. Okay, now that that's done, you must take the time to do a second setup to make sure you've done it right. I'll put the template back in place, put the square back in place against the template, and I will slowly slide the cutting board into position to make sure that it fits perfectly there. If it does, great. If it doesn't, make the adjustments until it does. Okay, with that side done, we're going to rotate and jump over to the other side. So I'll flip the template over. I'll slide it up so that the top edge of it aligns to the fence, like the arrow tells me. And the left side of it will align to that 3 quarter inch core box bit. Don't forget to put your square in place. Make sure that's lined up flush. We can move the template out of the way. And we'll put the cutting board in. Remember to use the same axis you used on the other side. This is the short axis of the cutting board. We'll bring the stop block into place and we will clamp it down firmly. Okay, you know the deal by now. We're going to check it a second time. I'm going to put the template in place. I'm going to put the square against the template. 
then I am going to slowly slide the cutting board into place. And as long as the cutting board fits perfectly, it's done and ready to go. Got to be along the stop block and the square. All right, now we're just going to cut the final two grooves in the uh, cutting board here. So we're going to turn the router on and keep it tight against the fence, the cutting board there, and we'll slowly plunge down over the bit while we're moving the cutting board in that direction. And we'll go slowly and we'll cut all the way to the left to our stop block and then come back, keep cutting all the way to the right to the stop block. Then carefully lift the cutting board up while keeping it snug against the back fence. And we'll flip the cutting board over and repeat the same exact procedure on the other side. If you like this video, we'd really appreciate if you give us a thumbs up and we'd be super delighted if you would subscribe to our channel by hitting that subscribe button down below. That's how we grow our channel and that helps us to do this full time and support what we do and, and try to help out the woodworking community at the same time. Thank you. And here's where you can tell that all of your hard work in measuring twice has paid off. Uh, and if it has, then the corners of the juice groove will meet perfectly. They won't fall short of one another and they won't overlap one another. And that's really all it takes to uh, cut perfect juice grooves in a cutting board with a router table. And next I'll put up a screenshot of the exact size of this little juice groove template or jig. And uh, you can copy down these numbers and make one for yourself. Each dimension is critical. It has to be exactly the same length, width, and thickness of this part, but you can glue and laminate up pieces to achieve that exact size. You might have noticed that I'm using the words jig and template interchangeably here. Uh, they are, in fact, different things. A jig is a type of tool that controls the position or movement of another tool. So by controlling position, this acts like a jig. But a template is a form that has the finished, finished shape and size built into it. Oftentimes a template looks exactly like the finished product, and we can use it for copying and making identical parts. In this case, our tool contains part of the finished shape and size within its form. Therefore, it's also a template. Thanks for watching.